alcohol and tobacco. These are two more things which are uh, affecting our body. People who take alcohol, they suffer from various problems. What exactly happens when alcohol goes into our elementary canal? Its absorption takes place in the stomach itself. It gets absorbed from stomach. This alcohol then reaches liver. What happens in the liver? In liver, alcohol gets converted into acetaldehyde. This acetaldehyde promotes fat formation and storage in liver. This condition is known as fatty liver. Liver doesn't store fat. Fat is not the place or liver is not the place where the fat can be stored. So this is an abnormal condition. And whenever there is an abnormal condition in any part of our body, we try to isolate it with fibers. So now there is fiber formation. Fiber is collagen. And this is fibrous liver. So when the liver gets fibrous, it becomes hard, that part becomes non-functional. And we know liver performs so many important functions of our body. Clotting factors synthesized in liver, leave aside calcium ions. Glucose metabolism, removal of unwanted uh, amino acids, converting ammonia into urea. So many, bile production is definitely one emulsification of fat. Removal of bilirubin, biliverdin, there's so many important functions. And this condition is known as cirrhosis. Just cirrhosis or liver cirrhosis. When a person takes alcohol, the first part, every, or, every system gets affected. The first part which gets affected is cerebrum. Cerebrum of the core brain is responsible for conscious effort. It is responsible for senses. Something which you do after thinking, after analyzing. So after the influence of alcohol, the person loses that conscious behavior. They start using some, you know, abusive languages. They start screaming. They do not have any, you know, uh, idea of what is happening around them, who all are sitting around them. Then it affects cerebellum. Cerebellum is responsible for our body posture, equilibrium. So when they walk, they are not able to balance their body properly. They may fall. So that is because of the cerebellum getting affected. It affects our digestive system also. When the alcohol reaches the stomach, the stomach starts producing acid and enzymes. Now, as soon as the alcohol reaches the stomach, Stomach produces enzyme thinking that there is something which needs to be digested, but it gets absorbed from there. The acid remains in the stomach. The enzymes remain in the stomach. There is no food. So these acid, these enzymes, they start attacking the wall of the stomach and it results into peptic ulcers. Alcohol is a diuretic. It increases urine volume. If urine volume increases, the person may feel dehydrated, constipation. These are all digestive system related problems. Kidney, because alcohol is a diuretic, it is exerting load, burden on the kidney. This has effect on our body. But if a person takes alcohol, not only the person is suffering, but the people around that person are also suffering because alcohol is expensive and people get addicted to it. Because if they don't get that alcohol, their body starts demanding it. And how does the body demand? It shows some kind of tantrums. 
Tantrums are there would be cramps, there would be nausea, there would be, uh, you know, there would be headache. These are called withdrawal symptoms. And these are painful. So to avoid that, the person again takes alcohol. So there are rehabilitation centers where these people are, you know, uh, psychologically they are uh, treated, they are treated with uh, some medicines so that they can leave this. The family also suffers because the entire money goes on buying this. They become violent. So there is, you know, there are fights among the family members. So other members of the family also uh, suffer from it. Tobacco. Now this tobacco is another uh, problem. Nicotiana rustica and Nicotiana tobacco. These are the two plants. Nicotiana rustica and Nicotiana tobacco. These are the two plants and their leaves are used to make tobacco. Tobacco can be smoked. It can be chewed and it can be sniffed. When a person smokes, the smoke goes into the lungs and the smoke contains those unburnt carbon pieces. So these carbon pieces, they get deposited in that mucus of alveoli. And because of this deposition, the alveoli, they become inflammated that much area is now not available for gaseous exchange. And such a condition is known as emphysema. Emphysema is inflammation of alveoli due to deposition of tar. And if your lungs are not able to exchange the required amount of oxygen, less oxygen is going to reach the body parts and if less oxygen reaches that condition is known as hypoxia if our brain gets less oxygen then it is dangerous our brain cells are very sensitive to oxygen so it has uh, nicotine is there then uh, benzpyrene, some little amount of benzpyrene is also there. The smoke also contains carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide with hemoglobin makes carboxyhemoglobin, which is a permanent complex. That means that hemoglobin is permanently removed and this is known as carbon monoxide poisoning. It can lead to suffocation and a person may die. 31st May. May 31st is observed as no tobacco day. This is the day when they, you know, uh, try to motivate people to quit smoking, not to start smoking. And the main problem is the adolescents. Why would person start taking this or alcohol? Why would person start smoking? When it is written on that cigarette case everywhere that it is harmful to your health. Normally these problems start at young age. When you start going to colleges, there is peer group pressure. One person takes it and the person, you know, uh, uh, keeps poking you that you should also take it and you also get influenced by it. It can be because of social gatherings. But normally it is the adolescence. This is the age when the person gets addicted to it. You start once, you think that you're going to take it only once and then stop it. But your body, because it has receptors, everything has receptors. Now your body starts to demand it. And if you don't fulfill the demand, your body starts showing symptoms, the withdrawal symptoms. Withdrawal symptoms are painful. They are tortures. To, so to avoid those symptoms, you take again. Now, more receptors are formed. They ask for more. You take some more, more receptors are formed. So it is very difficult to slowly stop using it. The only way is quit. In one go, if you stop, 
the body has to withstand those withdrawal symptoms. But if the willpower is strong, the person can quit this. So alcohol and tobacco, these are the two main problems. And we have seen all the effects. Now, prevention and control. Avoid undue peer group pressure. Don't get influenced by people. Education and counseling, like we have it in our syllabus. You can talk to people. There are counselors who can do this counseling thing. Seeking help from parents and your peer group members. If there is something of this type, you need to quit it. Talk to your parents. Ask them to help you. Ask your friends to help you. Looking for danger signs. These are basically for parents. When a person is taking alcohol or drugs or smoking, then they start to stay away from the family. So parents can easily find out that there is a change in the behavior of the child and that can be an alarming sign and then they can talk to the children. And then seeking professional and medical help where, for which we have rehabilitation centers. So there are proper um, teams, there are proper uh, medical uh, facilities available and the doctors are also there. So they're treated in a very uh, scientific manner. So all these things are available if a person wants to quit these things.